everyone, I'm back. And this time I'm going to be recording the video I told everyone I was going to record last time, but got carried away and talked about something else entirely. We'll try not to let that happen again. I wanted to share with you the time lapse of my most recent painting, which was a draw this in your style challenge by the artist Cutest Introvert on Instagram. Her work is absolutely amazing. If you don't know her, look her up. I'll put a link in the description. She's a huge inspiration of mine right now. And I just, when I saw this one, it was just so cute. And I love the colors. I just knew I had to give this one a go. And I'm really proud of myself. I actually recorded all of the footage. It just That just never happens. Even when I intend to, something will go wrong. Like I have a hard drive full of half recorded videos. I don't know if you guys are like that too. <sighs> Good intentions. I'm going to show you the sped up footage. The whole thing took about, I think it was about 15 hours to paint. So uh, this is quite sped up. And I will talk you through the process, the decisions I made, and also probably some of the mistakes I made. Let's get started. Now this one started for me very differently from my usual work. I tend to lean very heavily on reference and this piece was 99% imaginative beside the original painting that I based it on. This was like purely from imagination. Because of that, I decided to work from a gesture sketch first. It's just hard to say gesture, gesture sketch, <laughs> gesture sketch. You'll see that I am playing with a lot of different poses, different angles, different perspectives. I'm really just trying to get a sense for what I wanted to feel like. At this point, I'm not worrying too much about anatomy, uh, hence the kind of broken neck look. We fix it later. The reason I'm sketching in this kind of like tealy kind of color is I find sketching so much easier when I'm working in color. I think it's like a mental trick, mind game thing, where we're very used to seeing finalized lines in black. So I find that anything that looks kind of a bit rough and not perfect in black really jars me. And I just don't like my drawings as much when they're in black. So yeah, if you find that you don't like your sketches, like try sketching in a different color. I actually got some great feedback from my friend Sanguine, another person you should check out on Instagram if you don't know them, his work is incredible. He showed me that in the original, there was something very like childish and fun about that pose the way she's hunched over and I was losing some of that in my sketch so in a minute here you'll see that I start like bringing those short shoulders forward uh, another change I make is that I I always draw adult women I just never draw young women and so I just went straight in and drew this this figure as a woman but the and like I keep it that way like it is it is definitely like a more womanly figure but I found that I was presenting kind of too much sexuality I just didn't like the feel of it. So you'll find that just through this process here, you see me like changing the position of the rope, just and in the end, I just went for a more like playful look. I decided to just tone all that stuff way back. I really like these kind of chunky quad shapes with sort of straight but not straight edges. That was just something I was feeling for this piece. It just kind of felt playful and a bit wonky. You'll see that I start trying to establish gradients fairly early on. So I'm trying to bring in a sense of light. I wanted to have like a warm light in the top left and a cool light in the top right. And that came from the original artist. I wanted to keep that lighting scheme going. So before I get into rendering any details in this piece, my hope was to establish some kind of color scheme throughout. So you'll see through this part of the process, I am working kind of really zoomed out and just looking at each part and thinking like, what, what is the main color here? Where is the light hitting it? What color is that light? And I'm just working kind of simply. Uh, you'll see that I'm working on a ton of different layers. That means that I can bounce back and forth. I'm shifting the hue and saturation around. That's one of my favorite ways of working is to just have the different colors I'm working in, keep them very, very simple and keep them on different layers. And that way, if like I've got it all together and I'm like, actually that was like, that was way too saturated. I can just go to that layer and I can use the hue saturation sliders to just bring that to where I want to be. You'll see that I continue to change the colors throughout the painting process, but I like to have some kind of something fairly coherent in place before I start rendering. It's so much easier to correct colors when they're kept simple and separate like this than to just dive right in, merge it all down, start painting, and then like 10 hours into the process go, oh, I'm not really into that blue color. Cause at that point you're just like got a mess of gradients and you can't just like cleanly change that. So I really like to have this all kind of in place before I start rendering. 
You'll see that I start to bring this green bounce light in. I thought that was going to be really important. Uh, it wasn't in the original piece, but I thought that would be a really nice way to show this, the vibrancy of the light coming off of the leaves and really place her in the environment. Little tricks like that can really help your characters look less cut out. It's something I struggled with for a long time, but obviously it's, it's easier to see that there's going to be a warm light and a, a cool light and to bring that into the character. But things like bounce light of like filling those, those shadows in between where there's no warm or cool light hitting, but there is reflected light coming up from the green leaves around her. Stuff like that just really grounds your character in reality. I wanted to establish the background really quickly. So once I had this kind of vague sense of the colors and values that were gonna go on in the foreground, I switched to the background and that's where I started rendering. I didn't want to get so carried away with rendering into the foreground that I lose sense of what is kind of bringing it all together. It can be very easy to get very contrasty on the figure and that's a good thing because that's our focal point, but I find it harder to then match that with the background. Whereas having the background done first means I have a context for everything else. The uh, the leaves on the right, the bluish tinted leaves, took me about 15 minutes. They were just, they just worked. I was so happy with them. The leaves on the right, hours. <laughs> just trying to get them to match on the right. I was having trouble with the values here. I wanted to have this really nice warm glow coming through, but I found it was really competing with the character because she's warm and glowing. And, you know, it was it was a nice idea, but it conflicted with everything that the piece was trying to do. And that's something that's really important to realize. There's kind of like a hierarchy of needs when we're painting. There are so many different rules to obey that it's natural that at some point, some of those rules are gonna conflict. And so I try to rank them in my head on what is most important. And so my desire to have these warm glowing leaves in the background was like purely an aesthetic desire. It wasn't high up on my hierarchy of needs. But having the character really glowing and standing out, that was very high. That was really important. And placing that warm, glowy light above her need to have a clear silhouette that makes her stand out would have just made a muddy mess, essentially. Uh, she like she would have just got lost into the background. That like warm pink would have just kind of blended with that shape of the background and just made it not read very well. One of the things I really wanted to do in this was maintain a sense of depth. I really wanted her to be emerged in those leaves, not just kind of perched by them or standing in front of them. I wanted her to be a part of the scene. I really wanted her to feel tucked in. And so you'll see that as I'm drawing these leaves, uh, as you see these red lines coming up around here, this is me trying to get a sense in 3D of what those leaves are doing. I don't want them to just be cut out. I want them to be emerged in the environment. I want them to be growing like away towards whatever direction. I want to see the weight of her like pushing against those leaves. You'll see I spend a lot of time on this left-hand leaf really trying to get that right. I really wanted to give a sense of it kind of going towards her and then coming away because of her body weight pushing against it. I wanted that 3D shape to be super clear. I wanted to maintain those quads that I mentioned earlier that are repeating throughout the piece. And I wanted the lighting to just, you know, be accurate for the environment. I wanted it to exaggerate those shapes. I wanted to, to have that lovely bounce light coming off of her. I really wanted her to look wrapped up by this leaf. So I spent a long time here. You'll see me trying to balance hard and soft edges a lot. I really, really love soft edges. I feel like all of us have a kind of predisposition to work a certain way with hard or soft edges. I'm a sucker for soft edges. I don't really love how they look, but mentally that's just the way I love working. I'm just, I'm always happiest when I have an airbrush and I'm just softly brushing away. And so I have to really counteract that with hard edges. You'll see me using a lot of the lasso tool. You will see me using the smudge tool. You'll see me using the eraser. I often will create very soft shapes and then use a harder eraser to erase back into it to create a hard edge. There are different ways that you can go about creating those edges, but I like to really balance those. You'll see that on the left hand leaf and also scattered throughout the piece, I've created a kind of faux soft edge afterwards, those kind of chiseled out looks where it's almost like there's a transparency thing going on. I put those in deliberately because I didn't want that to look so cut out. In this piece, I try to save rendering the face until fairly late in the process. It is my tendency to just dive right in and render the face. I don't know if you guys are like that too. I'm, I'm murder for it. I just want to paint faces all day. I'll paint the face and then I'll lose interest in the piece. So in this one, I really tried to, to save that until I had established a good overall value scheme and somewhat got the environment in there. It just informed how much detail I needed to include. 
I tried to bring stronger lighting into the face uh, because it's a focal point because I thought it would look cool. I actually ended up kind of removing that. I thought that by you know, bringing in these really strong side lights, I was drowning out the very subtle green bounce light. And I think that that bounce light just really made her feel like she was there. And so I didn't really want to compete with that. You'll see me playing around with the hair here. This took a little while, uh, trying to balance <laughs> a, a gray white hair tone with warms on the left and cools on the right and greens underneath. And also trying to keep the overall just kind of this soft pastel look. Uh, <laughs> I spent a while on the hair. Usually I find hair much easier than I, I did this time, but uh, essentially what I was doing was keeping very strong shapes and trying to remain true to the color scheme without disrupting the values. So you'll see me bouncing around a lot with different things. Sometimes I'm trying really hard highlights. Sometimes I'm trying very saturated tones. Sometimes I'm trying to bring darker things in there to give a sense of 3D. I'm just experimenting and all the time I'm trying to keep it zoomed out so I can make sure that I'm not doing anything that's going to disrupt the existing scheme that I've already laid. I really struggled with the clothes in this. I don't know why it is, probably because I wasn't working from reference, so trying to get the drawing right was very difficult, but also getting those colours right. So again, I have all of these different light sources and then I also have her like plunging into shadow at the bottom. And that made it really difficult because in my head, I'm like, there's so many colors and so many values at play here. But in reality, it, it looked better when I simplified that down. You'll see that I kind of tone a lot of this down while I'm working. I'll bring in these strong values and bold colors and then I bring it back again. And that's just kind of how I work. I like to see where the edge is and then I like to bring it back. There's a point here where you see that I just completely obliterate all the like highlights that she had on the left hand shoulder. I just felt like it just, it competed too much for attention. It, felt when I was focusing on that area like it needed to be there but then as a, a whole piece having this like strong light on the shoulder just I don't know it kind of competed with everything it took the focal point away from her face away from this like bright leaf I actually found that when we made that darker it actually fit in with the piece more you know there's this her whole body language is hunched away and there's something kind of nice about having a dark simple shape interrupting the kind of bright focal points I'm still having to fix a lot of values at this stage. Again, I kind of realized that these, these clothes were just causing me all kinds of brain ache. I ended up using the cool tones on the right-hand side of the body to really set that arm behind her and give a sense of depth. You'll see me adding in more kind of clutter here. This was another thing I really wanted to bring into this piece. I said earlier that I wanted to, to be really emerged in this. So at some point about halfway through the process, I brought in some more plants behind her, these kind of like green ones to just create a separation between the foreground and the background, just have some like mid ground behind her. And then I also brought these leaves in right in front of her that again, just give like another, another layer of depth to this piece. In the end, I draw the whole piece together by using very, very subtle overlay and color dodge layers. I just wanted to give this sense of warm, harmonious lighting and a bit of a glow. I wanted it to feel very magical. You'll see me bringing in some particles in there. The particles were just like a spatter kind of brush and set to a very low opacity. And then I duplicated that layer and put a motion blur on it. I wanted this whole piece to be on a kind of diagonal tilt and that motion blur just really kind of helped. It's so subtle, but it really helped us make that read. One of the big things I realized throughout this whole piece was subtlety was going to be key. With all of these saturated colors and these, these contrasting values, it would be really easy to overwhelm this piece with absolute chaos. I try not to jump too far outside of those values. A good example of this is on the leaves in the foreground. You can see that although there are highlights on them, None of those highlights are anywhere near as bright as the darkest points in the, the brightest leaves. Because of my tendency to paint really soft, one of the last things I like to do to my paintings is to add a sharpening mask. I use Smart Sharpen and I try to make it a little bit subtle. If you go too heavy on this, you can end up with some like really weird, creepy, crisp lines. I find that really takes the edge off of my soft brush work and just makes it look, makes it pop. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this, I'm going to be doing way more of this kind of thing in the future. So make sure you hit subscribe. I'm still really new to this, so it still feels awkward saying that. I also have a bunch of links in the description. So if you want to see the artists I've mentioned in this video, if you want to take a look at my reference images, if you want to follow me on Instagram, make sure you check the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.